Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Okay, Frank, the final three questions I'm going to do uh, now. <laughs> so each final question seems to be... Uh, I haven't started. Don't worry. These are quick. These are as long as you want them to be. Uh, but, uh, but to hear Frank's answer, I'm going to ask you to sign up for my newsletter, briankeating.com, uh, if you want to hear Frank's answer, because I'm trying to get uh, more engagement with my beloved audience. We've got 10,000 people out there that are on the mailing list and another 20,000 or so on iTunes and YouTube. So I, I do enjoy it. I do want more people. Right. So I want to be able to have a direct channel. So if you want to hear Frank's answers to the last three questions, you'll have to sign up for my newsletter at briankeating.com. Oh, okay. You'll get life <laughs> lessons good. from Frank, from Jim Simons, from many other people, both at MIT or elsewhere. <laughs> okay, Frank, are you ready to go into the impossible? Okay, so yeah. last time I asked you, uh, the question, the first question involves what's called your ethical will. And actually someone who you know very well, or know of, uh, Alfred Nobel, his will was not just a material will. It not only contained what he wanted done with his money. He had no children, no spouse, no heirs directly. And so he gave his money uh, in part to an ethical cause, which was, as you know, to improve to the benefit of of all mankind, or as we say now, humankind. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you, in your ethical will, when you reach the biblical age of 120, and you're, uh, you know, you, you <laughs> go in the night uh, very peacefully at that ripe old age, uh, what do you want to bequeath to humanity, your, your biological heirs, uh, your grandson, <laughs> but also to ideological heirs oh, like me? <laughs> you promised me you'd answer well. it last time. <laughs> <laughs> uh... I have thought about this a little bit, but not too much. <laughs> not, not maybe not enough uh, yet. But uh, the well, first of all, I'm sort of operationally answering the question uh, as as I go on. I, I'm I have a my body of work. I think is my uh, is is that. So it it uh, it it includes, of course, technical papers. But I also think now. Uh, especially with fundamentals, actually, I'm starting to to have a uh, a legacy that that will be a broader cultural legacy, and so that that's that's so work. My, you know, my of course I have my uh, my family, and they 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 know me very well, and so they'll have uh, more concrete memories. Uh, and I want to, you know, enrich enrich their lives, and and I have a, a wide body of friends all over the world now, and some institutions in Shanghai and and Stockholm that uh, I've been influential in helping to to grow and start and develop. So yeah. I'd like to see those thrive. Uh, uh, I'm right. I, well, part of the cultural, <laughs> the, the the cultural legacy is uh, is may grow in different directions. I'm writing a mystery novel now that, oh, wow. that uh, will touch on some philosophical issues too. Wow! Uh, you promise to come back for uh, that too, uh, okay, Frank? <laughs> yes, and uh, um, uh, so and, and you know in in my I'm, I may you know these these are maybe not as grand I'm I'm thinking about um, you know I do write these Wall Street Journal columns I'm thinking about putting them together in an augmented form for a kind of uh, complement to fundamentals which just goes off in in different directions and comments and. Uh, 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 the, the the opposite direction, not drilling down, but opening up to wow. in the, to uh, uh, cultural and scientific applications that, that are uh, not necessarily fundamental, but but all over the place and wow. touching. In, in. So so th those are some of the things. And if, you know, if the opportunity arises, this seems far fetched, but if at the moment, but if the opportunity arises to uh, 
in connection with climate change or control of nuclear weapons or uh, addressing the challenges of artificial intelligence getting to be our uh, uh, peers, so to speak, uh, I'd be happy to try to help it contribute to clarify and <laughs> bring some wisdom to those questions. <laughs> well, there's a person I can introduce you to at your university named Max Tegmark, who's also interested in those very same topics. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you right. be you right. beavers may save the yeah. world yet, but I might get the stuff beaver, yeah. as you know. Okay, um, <laughs> second to last question is uh, is going into the future as well, which relates to Arthur C. Clarke's monolith in 2001, A Space Odyssey. And uh, it's yeah. basically this object that some civilization put on Earth and on the moon, but meant to be discovered when humanity was mature enough maybe to decipher it. And it kind of reminds me of one of your... I don't think it was it on... Oh, on Earth in the, in the prehistoric times. Yeah, yes, yeah. Right. It's, uh, the right. opening scene has a, has a clip of them uh, moving around yeah. these hominids, hitting it with the bone. Right. But oh, yeah. Oh, I... I I, I know that very, very well. Yeah. I've seen it so it reminds dozens me of, of times. I think I love that movie. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, it reminded me a little bit of, um, of one of your heroes, Richard Feynman, who had this cataclysm question. And somebody asked him, if in some cataclysm, uh -huh. all scientific knowledge were to be destroyed and only one sentence passed on to the next generation of creatures, what would it be? So I want to ask you, if you had a monolith that would last for a billion years or more, what would you put on it or in it? What, what I'd put, well, I think we may have discussed it earlier, or maybe I'm confusing it with another podcast, but as I said, our core theory or standard model is something you can uh, encapsulate, encapsulate in a short computer program. Okay. So I would put that on a USB stick, and that would be... <laughs> <laughs> not a CD-ROM, not, not an 8-track. Okay, good. All right, the last question uh, involves Arthur C. Clarke's right. laws. Uh, you already quoted the one we opened the podcast with, which is any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. He had another law. Uh, for every expert, there's an equal and opposite expert. And as the final law that we describe as the name of this podcast is the only way to discover the limits of the possible is to venture beyond them into the impossible. And that's mm -hmm. the that's the name mm -hmm. of our podcast. So I want to ask you, Frank, what, yeah. as a 20-year-old, 30-year-old, 40-year-old, however, uh, what piece of advice would you give if this mysterious time traveler uh, called Frank Wilczek encountered a young Frank Wilczek? What piece of advice would you tell him um, uh, to kind of give him the courage to go into the impossible? Well, I'd say read fundamentals, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> then, <laughs> then, uh, second, uh, uh, gosh, uh, I, I, I'd say, um, I, I'm not sure what the frame, I, I'm not sure I understand the framing of this question properly, but uh, I'd say maybe the advice I would give if I could somehow is that, uh, to, to, to a teenager, uh, life seems to be happening very fast. And, uh, you know, I remember when I was in this, when I was growing up, people used to say, uh, don't trust anybody over 30 or like the who saying, uh, hope I die before I get old. Right. Which by the way, they haven't, of course. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the thing is that you, it's, you shouldn't feel guilty about exploring and uh, invest investing in exploration as opposed to trying to immediately exploit the things you've learned and, and the skills you have uh, is a very wise thing to do. Mm -hmm. and so, uh, explore before you dig so to speak or while you're digging explore uh also that, that that's because because life is not so short there's right. there's there's plenty of time to think a lot of things mm. <laughs> well that's beautiful frank and, and it's more more important more important to to 
get your choices right and find something you love than to, uh, you know, start making money or getting tenure or whatever it is. You, you, uh, just think about what you're doing before you do it. <laughs> yeah, very good. I'm uh, learning to become a flight instructor uh, on my spare time, which is not very much. But, you know, one thing I'll say to my students is, you know, if you look at the moon, the moon is only a half a degree wide on the sky. That means if you're off by 15 arc minutes, you'll miss the moon completely, <laughs> right? So you got to be very careful. Anyway, Frank, I want to thank you for many things for right. being an inspiration to many of us in the world, uh, both in the sciences and outside of the sciences. This book is a, is a gateway drug into the mind of Frank <laughs> Wilczek. Uh, it is, uh, is a book full of meaning. And actually, you know, the, the laws of physics describe what the world is, but, uh, but I think the way that you look at it gives, uh, gives a sort of prose, but infused with, with the way a scientist should look at the world. And I found it very beautiful, very moving, almost emotional at some points. And, and I want to thank you for being vulnerable and, 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 and also courageous, as I know you always are. So thank you for sharing so much of your time. Good luck with the book. Thank you. And uh, we'll talk thank to you, you again okay. soon when your, when your murder mystery comes out. Till next time. Yes. Till next time. I hope this is <laughs> I'm sure there'll be many next times. Okay. It's a joy. Thank All you, right. Frank. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic.